What's up guys, today we're making a delicious Hungarian goulash. It's the first time I'm trying it, hope I pronounced it right. But let's see how it goes. Just remember it's the first time. Let me know if anything goes wrong. For our Hungarian goulash, the ingredients, uh, we're gonna start off with diced tomatoes. Doesn't really matter how small you dice them, as well as diced onions. This we're gonna start off with. I also chop some peppers. I cut them into thin longer pieces but then chop them into half. It doesn't matter, it just depends how you like them. I cubed up some potatoes as well. This is two potatoes. I've cut some beef. I bought this beef diced as it is, but if you want them at, in bigger pieces, it is it's let's say two inches is perfect. Then we've got our beef stock. Next we've got fennel seeds, which we're gonna use a little bit of, and then definitely salt and pepper. And I also diced some five cloves of garlic, which is a must. Now we've got two bay leaves. You can use dried bay leaves, but I have a tree, so I just broke two off there. And then we need some paprika. I don't have Hungarian paprika, but I'm just using the normal standard paprika then we've got flour the flour we're going to use later on just to baste a little bit over the meat before we fry it and then we've got olive oil and that's all our ingredients to make a delicious Hungarian goulash so first we're gonna start off with dusting off the cubed beef with the flour okay so the easiest way I figured out is just try and get some over as much as we can Just remember the flour is going to thicken our gravy and when we fry the beef it's going to give it a nice crust on the outside. Now we don't want too much, we just want it just coated lightly. So basically we can just dust it off and transfer it into another plate. Just make sure all the sides are coated and we want it similar looking to that. Okay, let's use a little bit of olive oil. As you can see, I'm using a glass top, which is actually not recommended. It's just that my gas plate just decided to give up stop working as I started cooking or prepping. Now we can go ahead and just fry the meat. On low heat, we just want it, we just want the flour to be cooked and the meat to just get a nice crispy outer layer. These are small pieces, so I'm sure I can fit all of it in this pot. It's a bit of an overkill, but it should work. While we're frying it, we might as well give it some salt. And just make sure it cooks on all sides before you remove it. Okay, so this looks good to me. And I think we can just remove it into the same plate we had it in earlier on. Just make sure you don't burn it, because if you do, you're going to have to start over. Now we go ahead and add in a bit more olive oil. And we keep it on low heat and we throw in our onions. Okay, I just have over 10 minutes on the onions. Now we can just go ahead and add in the peppers. I didn't add carrots. I'm not a big fan of carrots, so that you can add in if you like. I'm gonna leave this in for another couple of minutes. Let's say about another five minutes. Just get it a bit soft. But it is going to be in the oven for an hour and a half or so. Now I'll go ahead and add that crushed garlic or the chopped garlic. Let's get that cooked a little bit. Now I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of fennel seeds. That gives it a slightly different flavor. It's, it's got a good taste towards it. Now we can go ahead and add in the bay leaves. Let's mix that in and our tomatoes. This is two diced tomatoes. And let's mix that right in. There's gonna be a lot of water coming out from these vegetables. So it's going to help it cook quite a bit. Okay, now that we've got most of the water out of the vegetables and just the flavor that remains, uh, you can play with the heat a bit. 
just to get it to evaporate a bit faster we can go ahead now and add in the beef all the juices and everything get all that in there we can add some salt and pepper in now and mix everything in next we're gonna add in the beef stock just go in gently so it goes in everywhere This is three cups of beef stock. Now we just mix that in. And finally, we're going to add in our paprika. This is four tablespoons. It might seem a lot, but it's a, basically the only flavor we have. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of soup. Okay, so now that it's basically done on the stove, we can move it, transfer it into the oven. And we can come back and check on it in about an hour, maybe just to add the potatoes. Okay, so an hour is up, we can take a look at it. Whoa, okay, that's a bit hot. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Right, that looks good. It smells good as well. But now we have to go ahead and add in the potato. The pieces feel a bit tough, but I just hope it's not basically overcooked because those are small pieces of beef. And we can leave it back in the oven for another 30 minutes. Okay, this is the moment of truth. That looks good. Just test out the potatoes. Okay, yeah. The fork just goes through it, so that works. It smells good. Time to taste. I'm sure this is gonna be good. It smells delicious. Well, I might have used the wrong pieces of beef, but it's too small. Okay, that's pretty good. Just got a piece of meat here. Just breaks apart delicious it's really hot in here so let me leave you and I'll catch you in the next one